just arrived at one of the first sites, one of four. This is the first one in Ethel, which is sort of in between Santon and Rosebank. But you guys will see from the drone shots everything in terms of perspective of the different areas. Here we're here to meet up with Devon and Jade, which will be showing us around these fantastic developments for developments here we at the first site which is currently a construction site probably not the best shoes to wear today but for you guys we'll produce the content now and myself are so excited to share this experience with you guys let's just go inside and meet up with Devin and Jay to show us around hey what's up guys hey how are you doing hey. Nice to see you, Devin. Nice to see you again. Jade. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. So Jade handles all of our interiors. Yeah. I handle the development management. So Jade will show you all the finishes and I'm going to take you guys for a walk through the development and just show you what the Wahlberg is all about. Okay, awesome. Let's go. Cool. Do you mind telling us more about this development and where it's located? Absolutely. So this is the Wahlberg. We are based in Athol. Now the nice thing about Athol is it's one of the most affluent suburbs in the greater Santon area. So you get Sandhurst and Hyde Park which are in South Africa's top 10 suburb index and just after Hyde Park and Sandhurst you've got Inanda, Athol and Elovo. So we're in one of the most prime spaces that we can be in and the reason for this is we're three minutes away from Santon CBD we're one minute away from the M1 highway so for people who are commuting and need to get to the airport and we also have Melrose Arch just down the road so a development like the Wahlberg which is 15 high-end luxury clusters 15 in phase one, eight in phase two. So these are the first 15 that are being built in phase one. The benefit here is you've got a lot of corporates wanting to rent in the area. And people are moving to downsizing in Johannesburg. Johannesburg needs to be lock up and go. There's a huge emphasis on safety. You wanna feel safe and secure, but your big house is generally gonna be at the coast. So all the old money, they're moving into smaller homes in Johannesburg and spending more time in Plett, Cape Town, Neisner, Zimbali, and I think COVID was one of the big uh, factors of this too. People started working remotely and they realized they don't have to be based in Johannesburg. So again, Joburg, lock up and go, a nice luxury cluster. And the thing about being where we are, you've got a 24 hour guarded boom and then 24 hour guard at the entrance to the complex. So that's the kind of safety and security that people are really looking for. That's why an investor purchasing here will get a good yield and a good rental, especially from a corporate. Okay. The nice thing here with the homes is you've got so much flexibility and developers are realizing that you've got to give the power to the buyer to customize what they want to live in. So here at the Wahlberg, we go from type A, which is 282 squares, all the way through to type E, that is 507 square meters. So between A, B, C, D and E, there's something for everyone when it comes to the price point, but also the size and the layout. So the type A is a 282 square three bed, and the type E is a five bed at 507 squares, and then we have something in between for everybody. Then when it comes to optional extras, not everybody wants a pool, especially if it's lock up and go or a rental, your tenants aren't necessarily gonna look after the pool or you don't want the hassle of the maintenance and upkeep. So things like pool, staff suite, the air cons, audio equipment that's built into the unit are all optional. Those are so all options. 100%. Okay. So if you wanna buy at the base price, here when we launched it was 5999. Now that type A unit is already sitting at about 6.49. But if you bought early on, you could be all in at 5999, that inclusive no transfer fees, but then you could upspec and add as much or as little as what you like. In terms of that process of like choosing options, what's that process like? Is that like uh, holding the hand of the, the buyer through that process or how's that process work? We absolutely hold the buyer's hand. So Jade, who you guys met, yes. she's gonna take you through the finishes a little bit later on. But Jade will sit with the client and really customize what their needs and are. And just final question from my side for this part. You spoke about the different unit types from A until I, said, I think you said E. Yeah. What are like the target markets in terms of the types of people that, are, that would this development specifically be ideal for? That's a great question. So because of where we're situated, equidistant from Santon to Melrose Arch, a lot of schools in the area, a lot of private schools in the area. So you've got Kingsmead, which is one of the most expensive girls' schools in the country. We've got St. David's up the road. So pretty much 
families, but also people at corporate. So like an executive couple where one partner is an advocate and another an engineer, it's your higher income earners who are purchasing in this development, because again, the entry level was six million when we launched this development, up to 11 and a half million, which was the type E unit that I sold to an investor client. Awesome. So after this, we're going to be looking at, I'm not sure what you have in store for us, but what else are we going to be looking at throughout this development? So what I want to do, I want to take you on a walk through a type C, just so you can see the basic design of these units. And then I'm going to hand you over to Jade, who's going to show you a bit about the finishes. Awesome. So this is a type C unit, so it's directly in the middle. So this is yeah. 367 squares. You've got four bedrooms, all en suite. The benefit of this design is as you come through the front door, your fourth bedroom is downstairs. Nice. So now think of a family that has an older parent living with them, or think when you have guests over, if you want to separate your guests from where your kids are sleeping upstairs. So the nice thing with this design, every single home, as you walk into the entertainment space, there's these big double volumes. Sure, and you is. see over on the right hand side, that is your atrium. So a lot of indoor outdoor flow. So the sliding doors open up, your atrium doors open up and you've just got a lot of light and a lot of air. And this is Daryl Kroom's signature, mm. the architect who designed this development. So the atrium above there, is it gonna be open or? It's gonna have a glass sliding door. Okay. So you can slide it open. A lot of people are putting um, a lattice where they're gonna uh, put creepers and planters growing up. There was a lot of clients want to do a water feature, so you've got that sound of the water. So it's just a really beautiful way to bring the outdoors into your homes. Yeah, and we will be showing you guys some of the renders of this type so you guys can have a better sense of what he's talking about. So mm. this space here, what's this? So space? from a layout, the type C, the nice thing is that we start, we have a scullery, so back of house. Okay. So if you've entertained and you've got a lot of dishes, you put it behind in your scullery, mm -hmm. and this is what a lot of compact homes miss. Mm -hmm. So you've got dishes stacked in the kitchen that just looks ugly to the eye when you've got guests over. So separate scullery, your kitchen space, a beautiful island counter that's gonna go right here. So you've got all your kitchen cabinetry, you've got your stove and your hob and your oven on the island. Okay. Then we move, the dining area is in this big double volume recess. So you've got space to put a 10-seater table. What's really nice here is you can have pendants hanging down above your dining space. That's so literally what I was thinking about. You have stunning pendants hanging over your dining table. It could actually look so stunning. Absolutely. And then we've got your lounge area. And in your lounge, we're obviously building in all the TV points on the wall. But imagine like a three-seater couch, a three-seater couch in a U-shape, coffee table in the middle, television up on the wall. And then again, sliding doors that it opens up to an outdoor entertaining section where you've got your bra, nice. that could also be a gas bra, and a contained garden. Mm. People here are not looking for a rolling lawn so the kids can go run in the grass. Again, this is lock up and go convenience. So there's an emphasis on safety rather than size. Mm. And just behind you there, is this gonna be a large door or? This will all be glass windows okay. and there'll still be a boundary wall around the unit. So that will be looking onto your yard and the boundary wall that okay. separates the two. That's, that was my last question. In terms of like each of different types of units, the privacy of each individual unit, how is that being achieved? So the architect always designs the unit so nobody is looking on each other's mm. homes. And here you've got the entire home in a U shape facing forward onto the back wall of the home that's in front of you. Okay. So there are no windows looking out towards the back, except for our high level skylights. So the windows that just let light in, but physically no one's gonna be looking out of those windows. Okay, perfect. So here we have the master suite. Mm. So it's got its ensuite bathroom, shower toilet, double basins, and then this beautiful space a separate wall where we planned the headboard for the bed. Nice. Now a lot of developers don't think of this, but this is a wonderful feature. Look at these gorgeous views out the high level windows. Incredible. And then a massive rooftop terrace just off your master bedroom. So this almost doubles the space mm. of the bedroom. Super cheap to do because this slab is basically your outdoor entertainment area and part of your lounge downstairs. So it's not adding any cost for the developer, but it creates a usable space which almost doubles the size of your bedroom. Mm. Now imagine putting aluminium planters and bamboo. And what you have is just this outdoor oasis which creates privacy, space, and where you could have a morning coffee, read the newspaper, do yoga on your rooftop deck. 
and this is carried through on the other side where you've got your other two bedrooms upstairs both okay. en suite and another massive rooftop terrace off bedroom number two for the in the same unit the other bedrooms have another terrace Bedroom two is the same size terrace. Okay, perfect. And this obviously will be hedged off by balustrades or secret balustrades. Balustrades, but then each person can do their own greenery. So planters, bamboo, little lollipop trees. Each owner can make it his own. Nice. So one of the fantastic things about when purchasing a home at the Wahlberg mm. is that we can custom spec all the finishes. Okay. We have an interior designer who has done three color palettes for us. Wow. Um, we've got the buff, pale and sable color palettes. And they have been perfectly combined with the right wood color, mm. countertops, sanitary wear to give that perfect color match. So these are three options that people can choose from? Three options. Okay. They've done in a neutral, light and a dark color palette. But the great thing about it is that everything is customizable. Mm. So if if you like certain things from this palette and from that palette, we can combine. If you like a certain color that is not even on here, this is something we can do for you. I guess in terms of like purchasing a new brand new home, is that one of like the benefits? Like it's customizable in terms of different types of details or? 100%. Mm. When you're creating your own home, you get that real personal feel. Sure. I know that when I walk into a home, I want it to feel like I have created this yeah, space. Definitely. And often when I find clients of mine, after speaking their home and walking in, it is something that is unlike any other. Mm. So I definitely feel like that is definitely a selling point, as well as custom manufacturing the furniture and making it all one beautiful, Personal. custom, personalized Personal. home. So all of these three options, which one's your favorite? Oh, the buff, 100%, okay. definitely. I like the dark with the mix of the natural wood and the carpets. I wouldn't actually opt for the carpets, but okay. the, what's great is that you don't have to. Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. And then are these some of the renders of how it's going to look complete? Exactly. So the architect we've used here is Daryl Kroon. And Daryl Kroon is a Cape Town based architect okay. that is famously known for his open plan um, homes were filled with lots of natural light. So that is what we've recreated over here. The developers wanted them to give us a much more green feeling rather than a modern, you know, industrial concrete blocks. Yeah, I can definitely feeling. see that in terms of like the, the greenery. Exactly. Mm. So, but between all the homes, there's been a significant amount that has been put away for landscaping yeah. to promote all the greenery between it, giving hedges and, you know, trees so that you mm. have that feeling of being in the nature as well as being in a new modern development. Mm. I can even see there with like the, I think that's the aerial shot of the complete sort of development. You can see throughout within like the driveways, there's so much greenery. It almost feels like you're in nature in a way. Exactly, like standalone houses with their own big gardens. Mm. That's exactly how it feels. Because these gardens are very small, mm. all the homes have been fitted with sliding doors so that it can open up the inside of the home to the outdoor garden mm. area. So where are, we, where are we going now? We're going to a Type D at the moment. So this is our second largest unit that we have. Um, four bedrooms, four bathroom. As you can see, these homes are extremely large with double volume ceilings mm. and high level windows promoting all of that natural light. There's more than enough space for a massive dining room table over here. For sure. Kitchen over there, lounge area over there, opening up all onto your garden space, indoor outdoor living, as I said. <laughs> Insane. For a compact or compact unit, this is enormous. I think the it's... scales are ginormous here, I think. This, I wouldn't even call this a contained unit. I see them as standalones. <laughs> <laughs> So like this space here, is this where the garden would be? Yes, this would be the garden. So sliding doors would open right out onto your garden over here. Mm. Some people have opted for a pool area over there. Some people have done a plunge pool nice. or a long feature pool. Over there, there'll be a built-in bry. There has been options to be decked or just to leave it as a grass area, promoting a bigger garden. This is stunning because you'd have like your indoor area there and your sliding doors opening up to this stunning entertainment, bright area, pool. Exactly, making it feel a little bit larger. Mm. As the gardens are a little bit small, I mean, these are smaller homes, mm. so you want to make it feel a bit larger. And the Gerald Coombe homes promote a lot of light and, you know, feeling it connected to nature. Mm. So opening them up is exactly how we've done it. No, for sure, very stunning. So here we're at 37 Mawson Road, and again, one of the biggest selling points here is the safety and security. Behind us, you see a 24-hour boom and a guard. Mm. That is what everybody is looking for here in Johannesburg. So 37 Mawson Road, 
is 12 units. Okay. So these are not clusters, these are sectional title townhouses. So a bit smaller than the Warburg. So these, every single unit is identical. Okay. 270 square meters, four beds, all en suite, nice. with a staff room and a guest loo and a double garage. So they've crammed a lot of living into a very small space. Yeah. So let's go take a look. So is this the show unit? So this is the show unit. Based on this unit, hmm. buyers can come and have a look at exactly what the rest of the development is going to look like. Okay. These developers in particular, they don't allow any changes. So again, if we think about the Wahlberg where you can custom spec hmm. your finishes, your colors, your flooring, there's a lot of modification. Okay. Here, because it's a sectional title townhouse and because it's just 12 units, all the finishes are the same in every single unit. This obviously saves the developer a lot of time and money because sure. it's just one set of finishes. So you're ordering taps and bars and tiling for 12 units and it's all the same. Mm. So here there's no flexibility on customization. Okay. Only when the buyer comes and starts doing his furniture. Whereas at the Wahlberg, with it being a cluster and with it being a higher price point, they're a little bit more flexible. More options. These homes here are 6.75 million. Okay. but also we're in Hyde Park. So again, a very affluent area sure. and the land here is super expensive. Let's go inside and have a look. So the beauty in this unit is really the design and the layout and how we're fitting so much home into just 270 square meters. So there's parking for two guests right outside your garage. Okay. You've got your own double garage. Behind the back of the unit, there's a staff suite with a bedroom and a separate shower. So if you've got a gardener coming and working in your garden, he's got a space to go shower that doesn't affect your domestic worker if you do have a full-time domestic living on site. As you come through the double garage, you've got a guest loo and it's tucked away because often in these townhouses, your guest loo is right by the kitchen or the dining area, sure. which makes it a little bit uh, awkward going to the bathroom. Yeah. Here, the guest loo is tucked away. Then you've got open plan space. So you can see it's one beautiful space where you've got a lounge area, dining in the middle and then a wonderful kitchen. Kitchen, there's no actual scullery, but there is a space behind the kitchen that's tucked away. So again, if you've got guests over, you don't have to see all the dirty dishes. Nice. Then when we go upstairs, you're gonna see that there's a landing where you can fit in a desk. So a little study nook at the top of the staircase. And then you've got four bedrooms. Three of the bedrooms are facing north with beautiful views and sliding glass doors. All of them are en suite. You've got a bath in the master and the rest all have showers. And then you've only got one bedroom which is facing south. So that would be your colder bedroom. But that is what somebody could use as either a guest suite if you don't have three kids. Okay. Or you can use that as an office because you're not going to sleep there and you're not going to spend a lot of time For in sure. there. Okay, let's go upstairs awesome. and have a look. So what you're gonna notice here is just the quality of the finish. Because we're in Hyde Park, okay. your Hyde Park buyer is someone who's affluent. It's gonna be an advocate, a C-suite member, so like a CFO, a CEO, a CMO. It's gonna be someone working at a big corporate mm. or somebody who's used to living the top side of life. So if you have a look, it's laminate wooden flooring, but the wide laminate flooring. It's floor to ceiling sliding glass windows with beautiful views. Even the doors, so it's the black colored doors. So just the little attention to detail that the they've done. Things, yeah. The LED down lighters. And when we go into the bathroom, you'll just see the custom spec and finish. Mm -hmm. LED strip lights around the mirrors. Black sanitary wear. A little seating space in a shower. It's something that people don't think of the in a townhouse. Things, yeah. So here, everything is done top notch, high quality. The developer here also owns Eurotrend. So Eurotrend import all their finishes from Europe. Okay. So effectively, you're getting really good value here because they're putting all the finishes at cost, obviously making their profit on the sale to the client, yeah. but the client's getting top European finishes from the tiling to the flooring to all the vanities and the sanitary wear, everything comes from overseas. So you're getting a top class product at a really good value for Hyde Park. Sure, yeah, as soon as you step in this, the whole unit, you can almost see the attention to detail, the high quality of finishes, and that's very evident on all the spaces. Even like the small touch points, the plug points, everything seems like it was well thought out and like high quality was a priority here. Absolutely, so quality here is a must. Your buyer in Hyde Park is used to having the best of the best. Yeah. And this is where the suburb comes in. If you did this in a suburb like Bryanston or even Lone Hill or Four Ways, because it's 
cheaper to buy land in those areas, people don't expect the best of the best. Yeah. So this same unit, if you pick this up and you put it in four ways, it will drop from 6.7 million down to about 3 million. So you lose half the price just based on where it is based. Because in property, for me, I look at the three P's. Mm. It's the position, yes. so where is the property located? It's the product. So are we looking at something that's freestand? Is it a duplex townhouse like this? Or are we looking at an apartment and the price? And if you tick the box of those three P's, the right position, the right product, and the right price, they pretty much sell themselves. You don't really need the agent to do a lot of work. Mm. Mm. I saved the best for last. So this is the Hyde. Eight units, 367 square meters under roof, 10 million to 11 and a half million. These are all sold, everybody is already living in them, but I made a plan just to show you what the final product looks like. Go. Come check it out. You play the safe, I raise the bar, amaze the grace, I praise the Lord. Versace. So just take a look how gorgeous this home is. And I just want to put on some of the lights. You can see how well designed this is. The same developers as 37 Mawson, just on a bigger scale. So everything is open plan. Bigger stand sizes, because instead of 12 units on an acre, this is eight units on an acre. So, so it allows for bigger gardens and a bit more space. Okay. So let's just go into the garden and I want to show you how these homes are laid out. So the ins and outs of the hide. 420 square meter stands, 367 squares under roof. Now the nice thing here is it's three bedrooms, but it's three big bedrooms and then a space upstairs that can be used as a home office or a pajama lounge. Every one of the bedrooms is en suite and the master bedroom has a beautiful walk-in dresser and also has its own private patio off the master. Downstairs, you've got a double garage. You've got a recess where they plan for inverters or storage or in this case, this person uh, rides a lot of bikes so he can hang his bikes up there. In the garden, it's beautifully manicured. It creates a lot of serenity, but also privacy, like people aren't looking in on your home, which at a 10 million Rand price point is quite important. Yeah. You've got some high profile people who live here, uh, acting judges, um, people who work for the World Bank. So like quite high end people who have bought in this development. And then you've got a staff room again with its own shower. So all the modern day amenities that you would need big kitchen, scullery space in the back, and just beautifully open plan design so that, again, when you slide the doors open, it's indoor outdoor living at its best. And you can see there are certain themes from the Wahlberg to 37 Mawson to the Hyde. There are certain things that people look for in this category, which would be a compact cluster townhouse lock up and go. And also like the, as you said, the indoor and outdoor space, sort of walking in, going to like the more formal dining area and out here the, the, there was literally no barrier. I mean the sliding doors open up and it's, it's basically one space and that's why I think it's called like a compact unit where the indoor and outdoor there's no barrier between that. Absolutely. Absolutely.